Hey, mister. I would never give up. I'ma keep going. I'ma keep going. Yeah, I'ma keep going. 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 The Badan Film Festival with um, Sally Al Husseini. Did I pronounce it right? Yeah, Al Husseini. Husseini, okay. Um, the director of uh, My Brother the Devil, and with Fadi Al Sayed. Um, yeah, the, one of the main characters of the film. Can you maybe, to begin, can you maybe say a bit about My Brother the Devil? What is it about? My Brother the Devil is set in present day uh, London in the neighborhood, um, an area called Hackney. And it's the story of two teenage brothers uh, over the course of and their lives over the course of uh, one summer. And for Mo, who um, Fadi plays, the younger brother, it's a coming of age story. And for uh, Rashid, it's a coming out story. And the two stories intertwine. Um, there are a lot like the topics like which you just which are part of the movie, like social political topics such as um, gang culture, gender, homosexuality, second generation immigration. Um, why did these topics appeal to you? They appealed to me, um, I lived, I've lived in Hackney for 10 years um, okay. and it, um, that was part of the reason why I wanted to set a movie in Hackney. And um, these um, issues <laughs> um, that you mention, I guess, or topics, as you said it, um, are there kind of in life, but I hope that uh, on the foreground we have like a brotherhood story and that those things are just like layers in the background. Okay. Um, we really liked your performance. It was, it was amazing, it was really authentic. Um, how, how did you get into your role? Like how did you help your actors to get into that role? Like, yeah, how was that? Um, well, with uh, with Fadi, I think it was getting him not to overthink. Yeah. So yeah. getting him not to act, yeah. <laughs> um, and to just like uh, be in the moment without overthinking it. Um, yeah. And it, so for me, less with Fadi, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> She'd always say to me, "Less is more, Fadi. Less is more." And yeah, less was always more. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think with with Fadi, it was um, in a way not directing him because he's got an amazing instinct and um, ability to kind of um, just feel it the first time. So it was not letting it get old, so letting him experience things for the first time on yeah. camera, rather than rehearsing, over-rehearsing. Yeah. So um, that was, you know, as a director, you tailor um, your way with every actor separately, but that was specifically how I worked with Buddy, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Except for when I could punch him. <laughs> Which I'm joking. Uh, she would punch him, that's true. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and how did you get into this language? Like, the slang was so authentic. Oh, well, um, I, I live like 10 minutes away from Hackney, so the lifestyle is very, I'm very familiar with the yeah. lifestyle. Like, uh, a lot of my friends speak that way, and I can, it's yeah. very easy to pick up the language okay, if you yeah. just like you just hear it and observe and just you just kind of like it just sinks into you and especially when we was filming hacking as well like the environment you, you just felt a part of everything and the way where we was filming everyone was talking in that manner so it was just like you'd hear you talk and I'm, I'm quite familiar with the language as well okay. so it was like yeah I mean that's um, the language is something that's like London wide really yeah. if you're a teenager growing up in London you pretty much get it yeah exactly so okay <laughs> um, and what do you think about the topics of the, the film the, yeah, do you have anything, like a connection to them, or do they, um, well, were you surprised when you read the script? No, I was very surprised just because of how amazing it was, not surprised because I didn't like anything. I thought that like, the script was amazing, the, the fact that we've seen so many films of this drama and just like, it's, it's, a, it's a gang thing, so there's going to be stabbings, there's going to be shootings, there's going to be killings, and there's just going to be bad, like, images of these youths, but yeah. I love the way Sally, like, made these characters differently like you can see you, like you get to see them at home you get to see what they're really feeling and that's the problem with these type of backgrounds because you don't really get to see these youths port portrayed in that way you don't know what they're like like the press are always saying these people are bad people they're hoodies they're but you don't if you, you don't actually know what these people are going through so to get to see them and to get to explore the, what what goes what goes through their lives was really interesting to me so um, something else, you already said you shot the film in um, Hackney. Mm -hmm. How was it to, sh 
to shoot the film? Was it difficult, dangerous, or is this only like a picture made by the media? Yes. And it was like, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's, it's mainly a picture made by the media. But also, we were very, we were welcomed on the estate where we were filming, and um, the shoot was set up in such a way that the production office was like right on the estate where we were filming. Yeah, um, and so um, we were able to. Um, involve like a lot of people uh, who are extras in the movie and stuff that live on that estate, yeah. and it was a, ni a really welcoming and nice feeling. I mean, yeah. um, you know, Hackney Film Office also you know approved of us being there, yeah. and we we haven't yet, but we're going to take the film back to the estate and show it on the estate to everybody who is involved in making yeah. it, which is going to be really nice. I'm looking forward to that, mm -hmm. and then we want to try to set up some kind of like cinema club um, oh, okay. uh, on the estate. Um, right. So uh, we're trying to get kind of some kind of sponsorship um, to see if that if that's possible to erect kind of a screen and and s a sound system so that people can pay less to go to the cinema and watch yeah. really good movies there because a lot of um, kids on these days too expensive for them to go to the cinema so yeah. that's that's our plan but yeah 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 like I mean I'm I'm a student and with our friends I'm just like okay we really would like to watch this one but it's eight pounds. Yeah. Maybe we wait until it comes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's sad because then only old people, whoever goes to the cinema. Yeah, I can afford it, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was really curious, and we were curious how you did the research on this topic, like um, writing the script and everything. How did you. You already yeah. said you lived in Hackney for 10 years, but. Um, yeah. Um, well, my background is documentary, so I kind of took a bit of a documentary approach to researching it yeah. and uh, the film took five years to make um, so it was really through kind of some key relationships with um, certain boys um, in Hackney, Highbury uh, and Brixton and getting to know them that I was able to like enter the world and there was um, the actor uh, Eamon Hamducci who plays Repo in the film yes, the, the tattoo, the tattoo. Yeah. yeah so um, he was the script consultant on the project oh, so okay. He was one of the key relationships for me entering kind of that world. And another person uh, is Sari Kassim, who is our casting consultant, and was involved in bringing everybody to be in the movie and searching for our Mo as well, going around shopping centres and searching for our Mo when we were looking for the guy. Did, did they find you in a shopping centre? No. <laughs> <laughs> I bought him. He was really cheap. He was a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> how, yeah, how did you get to that? Um, well, S Sally had seen me before when I was really tiny. She seen me at the Arsenal Stadium. I was doing a, a gun and knife crime campaign for like like youths, and we're trying to like bring down the levels of that, like gun and knife crime campaign yeah. in the community. And she had seen me when I was really tiny, and she had sort of forgot about me because I was like too small for the role. And uh, I was doing a drama production where she was invited, and uh, I see her with Aiden, like got to talking about the film. But she was telling me that she was kept looking at me, and she was like, <laughs> "Well, my voice was a bit deep, and I had facial hair, and my hair was really long, so it was like, like uh, maybe I'm a bit too old for the role." But like, I just kind of, I, I was willing to do everything. I even cut my hair, and like, I just said, "I'll do everything." And so, uh, Sally was like, "Don't cut your hair yet. You haven't got the role." Yet. <laughs> yeah, but I was just willing to do everything. Yet. I'd, I'd done the audition and uh, it went great. I was I'd done the audition with James and he was so great. It was really helpful, and uh, I just I just fell in love with it really. And then uh, I, I headed off to Egypt actually for a summer holiday because that's where I'm from. And I got the recall while I was in Egypt and it was while all the revolution was happening. And I'd lost my passport out there, so it was really crazy to get back. <laughs> and the British embassy is right in the middle of Tahrir Square where everything happened, so it was like really crazy to get everything back. But Eventually, I managed to get back, and the day I got back, I went straight from the airport to the audition room, and just done it, and it just went great. So, yeah. <laughs> Sounds exciting. That's how she found me. <laughs> um, okay, and before you said the script, so how long, how much time did it take you to write the script? Um, it was developed over. Well, the whole movie took five years, and the script is never finished. You know, you, I was. I was writing it while we were shooting because as things had to change, yeah. um, you know, you're doing kind of rewrites and certain things become no longer possible, so you have to kind of change things constantly. So I don't know, a script is never, well, a movie's never finished either. You know, for yeah. me, it's, they always say a movie is uh, abandoned and never finished. But it definitely felt like that. I could have kept editing, <laughs> for sure. Um, so it, it took many years, and through those many years, we were able to um, 
I, you know, I, I went on to a number of different programs. So there was the Marawi Lab, there was the Babylon program, and then I was on the Sundance Institute Screenwriters yeah. and Directors Labs, um, and through like the Doris Duke Foundation for Islamic Art that supported it, the film, the development of the film with grants. All those different kind of schemes over the years really helped me keep the faith and keep going with it. Yeah. Um, because for many years, I, it was just literally me and you know. Uh, Struggling, yeah, struggling to, to get film. to make the yeah. film. And the hardest bit of the whole process is raising money. So that's always the toughest thing, is uh, raising the money for the movie. How did you in the end finance the film? Like, where did you get the funding? Oh, uh, completely independently. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, no kind of big institutions that give money. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, An independent film, I'm more proud of uh, managing to make it independently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. There's so many great independent films we have to learn from that, so we really enjoy it. Yeah. And enjoy talking to independent filmmakers. Yeah. Um, something about the cinematography, mm -hmm. you, you won um, the award for best cinematography at Sundance, and I mean, it's beautifully shot. It's, um, That's thanks to David Redeker, our cinematographer. Yeah, yeah, it's even like poetic. You have like the, the feeling you, you get into the film, like really strong. Um, that was all part of the plan, so I'm glad you felt that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We loved it. It was amazing. And um, like, which atmosphere did you want to create with this kind of style? Um, really, to keep us as close as possible to the brothers. Yeah. So that we were um, inside the world with them and feeling it through the five senses. That was our starting point. Um, and we didn't want to be like outsiders looking in avoided we made up four rules actually and one of the rules was no master shots and um, they were in pre-production I spent three weeks with David Redecker the cinematographer and Stefan Collange who's our production designer and the three of us literally went through every single scene of the movie and uh, getting to, to really to the heart of what was happening on you know not just so much happens that's subtextual in the movie, so we were like addressing kind of what was happening on a deeper level than just stated in the script. And then we were able to kind of um, plot it on like this, we made this big graph um, with an X and Y axis of like, um, <laughs> there was happy, sad, and okay. then there was the time of the film, and then we divided it into five chapters. So we were able to chart kind of each of the brothers on that, and then we were able to kind of build a certain look and aesthetic for um, the different worlds of the movie, but then also the framing of the brothers. And that's how like the decision to shoot it in CinemaScope came about as well. Um, because Scope really allowed us to um, make the, to, to really play with the frame with foreground and background. And it made like what could be quite a mundane environment that you're quite used to feel like an adventure and make it slightly more objective, um, sorry, subjective because of um, it forces you to a lot of close-ups when you go with scope. So um, I really wanted us to feel like um, the beads of sweat on the brothers' faces, or to see their spots, yeah. and it, you know, for us to um, feel very intimate with them. Um, and we shot the scene. Kind of um, the approach was, well, how does Mo and Rashid feel in the scene, and whose POV is is it? You know, um, mainly Mo's, and then. Um, we, we said it was actually a 1.5 POV when Mo was the one and Rush was the 0.5. So, um, yeah. Um, what do you mean by no master shots, like your rules? Um, what did you um, mean that? When you, well, not covering it in a conventional way, because usually, yeah. you know, you'd establish the space in um, one master shot and then you can go in tighter so people know the um, geography of a space. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. so a viewer becomes familiar. And that's kind of a very conventional way to kind of shoot. But for example, if you, you know, we, we that's why we didn't want any master shots, so that we let the audience um, feel, ex experience and see and get introduced to the world through the, the boys' yeah. experience of it. So we don't ever show, it doesn't mean no wide shots, but it just means no um, shots that explain um, a sense of geography or tell you where you are. Yeah, I think that the viewer gets on the journey with the characters. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what it was to try yeah. to do. To yeah. Yeah, I think you really succeeded in doing that. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I understand what you mean. And um, yeah. yeah, great cinematography. Yeah. Um, another thing which was in our mind, the rap music. Like the rap music plays an important role in this mm -hmm. film, and it creates 
it's created a special atmosphere. Yeah. Um, it was very. Um, it adds a level of authenticity. Like um, it was always my decision to make it um, to keep that kind of urban music of the world as like diegetic music, and to yeah. have like the more emotional um, story being told through score. So the score kind of like takes you on the brother's journey, whereas the um, the the use of like uh, of of urban music in the film is really to lend kind of the authenticity, and it only ever comes from like a car uh, a stereo or an MP3 player yeah. or in somebody's house on their CD player. It never you know comes from us. Or when Mo puts the headphones on, you know, um, and then we go into his head with him and see through his eyes. See Aisha through his eyes. We should turn our mobile off. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, and then finally, yeah. you are now at the Berlin Film Festival. You were before the sun at Sundance. How is it to be here at Berlin? Um, what do you think is unique about the, the Berlin Film Festival? Um, well, I've, I've managed. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Actually, <laughs> the cinemas. Yeah, They're great. The, the screen's huge. Like the quality of the sound and like the visuals are just amazing. And the theatre. What was the theatre that we were at? Um, Friedrichstadt Palast. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah. even is yeah, yeah that was amazing. But also even the other one, the yeah, cinematic. It wasn't as big, but the screen was yeah. massive and the quality was amazing. Yeah. So. Well, that's think, not the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we've we've been quite spoilt by um, yeah. seeing the movie on these incredible kind of screens and with amazing kind of audio as well. So yeah. I don't think I, I think I only ever want to see this movie in Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't watch it in any other country. I mean, just just the whole like organization of the festival is just amazing. Like, everything about it is just great, and the people here are so kind. And it's yeah, just the, the panorama place. team have been great in like looking after us. And, yeah, yeah, and it's it's nice because it's a little bit more of a relaxed festival. And what has struck me is how packed out all the cinemas are. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's this. You know, we're sold out, and the cinema's packed, and everybody stays for the Q and A's. And I was just walking in the street, and I overheard two, like normal people, having this big discussion about a film they'd just seen, and I could hear a little bit bit of it. And I was like, wow, like there's real cinema lovers in Berlin. That's yeah, what it exactly. Feels the like. Berliners, they're like, they love the they, cinema. They even sleep in front of the shopping center to get tickets for the. <laughs> oh really? Do they? Oh. Okay, well and, that would explain that. Yeah. And they. And also to get tickets for your screenings, they have to go online and have to be online in the second minute, and or to go, it's it's com really complicated actually to get tickets for the screens you want. Like for we are press, so it's easier for us, but yeah, it's like yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. there is something else I just wanted to add before we finish the interview, yeah. which is um, one of the um, uh, part of the, something that hasn't been mentioned a lot in interviews yeah. is the editing. And it's, uh, I think that uh, Ian Kitching, the editor, um, and myself, we've known each other for 10 years and we've like, in a way, I've only ever worked with Ian because yeah. we work so well together. Um, we have a really um, great kind of uh, collaboration, you know, and I'd like, I only ever want to work with him as an editor. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> so he was, um, he actually was there with me for the whole five years and read every draft of the script. And it uh, was uh, very much, he, he knew that story as well as me, is what I'm saying. And it, when we were actually shooting, we were on such a tight schedule that uh, we actually were having the edit happen at the same time as the shoot, okay, so that right, there could yeah. be a dialogue. And Ian would actually come to set because the edit suite was also on the same estate. So he would come out of the edit suite and come to set and chat to David and say, oh, you know, we, ha we need actually this extra angle yeah. of this. And we were able to kind of, um, have that communication that often in a production when you're really yeah. spread out you don't actually get and I do think some of the success of the film is because of having that kind of direct communication yeah. all the way through um, so yeah I just I just wanted to mention yeah um, that. that's a good point like um, for example here in Germany only very few filmmakers they do this or can afford to do this like there yeah. are like like some filmmakers who who edit while shooting and they have like a big budget and yeah um, but this is like an exception, and yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah, and also um, because I have such a relationship of trust with Ian, and we know each other so well, um, I didn't actually have to watch my own rushes. Yeah. Because I was just about moving forward. You knew what. And yeah, I, I trusted, yeah. and he would yeah. come and tell me if there's something that he needed to pull me into yeah. the edit for to watch something back, 
and then to make a decision if it needed to be amended or because you know what you know we were so on the same page yeah. that we were able to move quite quickly that way so it actually saved the production probably time and money but it was part of the reason why i think the film we were able to kind of make the film successful yeah. was because of his contribution like that i mean he did much more than an editor should do probably <laughs> <laughs> and um the, the whole cinematography which is so amazing it comes from the yeah. dialogue with the edit, you yeah. know, and I often feel editors are unsung heroes, you know, so it's, it's you know, he was a very important part of the yeah. collaboration as well. Yeah, good, you mentioned that point, because, yeah. yeah, we didn't think much about it, but, yeah, as you say, the yeah. whole And I'm really we proud see. of the editing in yeah. the movie as well, so, you know, even just, like, the, the, the music of the image and how they um, mesh, you know, which is very much down to the edit. And, um, maybe, like, last question. Yeah. Um, can you, where do you think your form is going to? Like, do, can you see? I don't have a crystal are? ball, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, it's, it's the first, my first feature, and um, really it's, you know, I hope that it can be seen by as many people as possible in as many places around the world. So, yeah. Yeah, good luck for that, and thank you. good luck for the every awards which you can, could become and could get. And thank you very much for the interview. Thank you. Nice. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>